What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're back here at our exterior porch ceiling installed day two and we're ready to start installing our one by six Windsor one tongue and groove boards. Now, if you didn't catch the first video, I'll put a link at the top of the description, but essentially what we showed is how we got to this point in getting the ceiling prepped and ready for the install we're about to show you. So I got a lot of stuff to go over in this video, so I really just wanna jump right into it. What you see here is an assortment of tools that I have laid out, and just as kind of a starter on what we need to get this installation going. We may need more tools as we go throughout it, but uh, if we do, I'll definitely let you know what they are and why we're using them. So let's start from the left and work our way to the right. Probably one of the most important things when you get into this is the moisture meter. You can't even start this install if your boards are 18% moisture content or more. So what we've done is we've got our stack back here and we've took multiple readings with our moisture meter and we're looking at about 11 to 12% moisture content. So we're ready to go ahead and get started. But if you don't know what one of these are, it's basically this little device that has two prongs right here and those are the parts of the device that read the moisture content of the material. So these will actually press into the wood and they'll give us a reading and it's 11%. So like I said, we're sitting about 11 to 12% on these boards back here. You wanna check multiple boards in multiple different locations just to make sure you're kind of getting an average of the moisture content. Next thing I'm gonna recommend is a laser. This is gonna be great for measuring these long boards. We're gonna be installing about 16 foot long boards and it's just so much easier than stretching out a tape measure. Also, we're gonna check the room for square before we get started. We wanna make sure that uh, when we get to the other side of the room from our starting point, that the room is not off. So I definitely recommend a laser. So this is our material right here. One by six essentially with a tongue and a groove. It's treated. It's primed on all four sides, but obviously when you cut it, you expose the raw wood. Now, ingrain cuts on this kind of wood are like drinking straws. All these little wood fibers are trying to absorb water. And you think about this, this used to be an alive thing. It was a tree, right? It was trying to grow. It was trying to reach its full potential, so it was trying to take in water. While it's no longer alive, it still has those same characteristics of wanting to take in water. So what we got here to eliminate that is our paintbrush and our exterior grade latex primer. So we'll just get our primer. Anytime we make a cut, we're gonna seal it off and close up those uh, wood fibers with that. So next thing we need to do is talk about fastening. We're using 16 gauge finish nails and we're gonna be doing a blind nailing pattern where we're not gonna expose those nails. So 16 gauge finish nails, you cannot use brads on exterior. It's just not acceptable. So you gotta use 16 or 15. Now 15, I've experimented with that. It's a little too much, at least with my nail gun. Um, I've got the DeWalt uh, battery powered nailer. You can't really adjust air pressure, right? Cause it's battery. And it's just a little too powerful and it tends to split uh, this tongue off right here. So 16 for me is kind of the sweet spot. And you know, I use pretty much nothing but cordless tools, but again, hitting a sweet spot with a pneumatic nailer is good because you can adjust the pressure and kind of get it right where you want it so it doesn't just blow through that tongue. So don't worry, this is still Dewalkie, DeWalt nailer with our Milwaukee compressor back there. So we're still good to go on that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about as far as blind nailing, I'll show you right here, I've got a loose nail. And with this loose nail, pretty much what we want to see is this in our nailing pattern. We want to be at an angle like that in that tongue. So we don't want to be in this chamfered edge right here. That's obviously not going to be a blind nail. We want to hide it in the tongue, but we're going to do it at an angle. If we do it straight, you can see the problem with that. It's going to affect and pretty much not allow the next groove to slide into that tongue. So we want it like this and we want it blind. And blind, I'll show you real quick as an example. Um, I'll shoot this nail into this piece of sheathing. Blind nail pattern. When I put the groove over the tongue, you won't be able to see the nail. So I'll just shoot this in like that. So you can see right there, I shot that. It's up there, you can see my nail hole right there. But when they come together, they're no longer um, exposed. So. Just, just a really good pattern. Anytime you can blind nail and get away with it, I mean, it's, it's always a, a better thing to do. And then one other thing, I'll show you a bad example. 
of that shooting. That would be, you know, this is kind of an extreme example of shooting straight down. But if we don't angle our nail enough, this is what's going to happen. Our next board is not going to seat on there properly. So you can see I'm pushing on that and it's a blind nail, but it's not letting me, you know, close that, that joint right there. So we got to shoot at an angle. We got to use exterior grade nails. We got to use the right nails. We got to prime all of our cuts. We got our laser, we got our moisture content. We are ready to jump up on that scaffold and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is take some measurements. I'll start on my starting wall, which is this brick wall, and I'll shoot my laser all the way over to my ending wall, which is the rough framing on the far end. I'll take a measurement in that corner and in this corner, making sure these walls are pretty much parallel with each other. If they're close, it's good to go. If they're really far off, then I'll need to make an adjustment. In this case, they were good. Next, I'll take a measurement for the length that my boards need to be cut to, and I can batch cut these. I'm gonna take a measurement on the far end, and then I'm gonna get close into the corner and take that measurement as well. They averaged about 183 and a half in measurement, and I back them off to 182. The reason I do that is so I can have a three quarter inch expansion gap all the way around. This material will not touch the brick. So I set up a stop block on the miter saw and cut all my boards to length in batch cuts. And this is just real easy using the cut hub and the stop block. Once my batch cuts are stacked up, I batch prime the ends. Like I mentioned earlier, this needs to be done and it's super easy when they're all in a stack like this. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and stage our material on the scaffold. This is very convenient so we don't have to climb up and down the ladder for each board. One thing to consider here as well, in the beginning, you may not have the luxury to throw up a full board as you see that we're doing here. You may have to rip down a board to get the proper reveal on starting wall and ending wall. So you really need to take that laser and do the math and see how many boards are gonna fit on the ceiling because the last thing you want is a full board on your starting wall and a little tiny like one inch strip rip down on your ending wall. It's just not a good look for proper reveals. Luckily here, we were able to use a full board to start, but even if we weren't, it's not a big deal. You just do the math, do the rip down, and you end up with proper reveals on both sides of the room. So this first board is actually really important. It needs to be straight because it's kind of the foundation for the rest of the install. Every other board will be based off this board. So take the time, make sure it's straight. I don't even have to do that with this Windsor and I say so much about it because I've worked with rough material. I've worked with inferior material and it's a pain digging through a pile trying to find a straight board. For example, one time we did a ceiling just like this in Southern Yellow Pine and it was rough. I had to reject about 50% of the pile. Whereas with this stuff, I have literally never gotten a bad board from the guys at Windsor. So that's why I highly recommend them and everything just looks so crisp and clean. You'll see it if you ever use the stuff, you'll be like, dang, he was right. This stuff is legit. So you'll see us as we go through this. I'll talk more about that router and notching that out and uh, the mallet and whatnot. But that mallet, I highly recommend it. You definitely don't wanna be hitting these boards with a typical hammer because you will break the tongues. Uh, you need a mallet, that's a flooring mallet that you saw me using and we use that to persuade the pieces to their new home. But we're moving right along here. It's pretty basic. As you can see, we just move in one direction and stack the boards up hit them with the mallet, blind nail them, and just keep going. So one thing that's really cool about the way we did this and the way Windsor recommends you do it is with the sheathing, you don't even have to worry about what you're shooting into because you've got that sheathing up there. We're using half inch CDX plywood sheathing behind that home wrap and we literally can just shoot anywhere. It's legit. So you may notice our expansion gap on the side right there, kind of wandering a little bit. That's completely fine. We don't spend a whole lot of time trying to keep it to the true three quarter. The three quarter is just overkill, so we're not fighting any bricks that might be sticking out or unevenness in the balls. So that's completely fine. It'll all be hidden. No one will ever see that. All right, so let's talk real quick about the easiest way to cut out for your notches on a tongue and groove install like this. So you can see right here, I've got this speaker opening and the board, we installed it just a full board because we don't want to take a pencil and mark it and then make that circle, get our jigsaw out. It's just really a big waste of time when you have a tool like this. Now this is a two and a quarter horsepower DeWalt plunge base router. So plunge base router, 
It has a lock right here. It has multiple adjustments actually, but that locks the plunge. And then you can set the depth. And I want my depth set about right there so I can cut into three quarter inch material, which is what this tongue and groove is. So I can check it right there. I'm pretty good right there with my flush trim bit. So plunge base router on a, with a flush trim bit. This is the perfect setup for cutting perfect notches in these circles and you can even use this thing on your square and uh, rectangle notches. So flush trim bit, right? It's where the bearing rides on something and then the router bit cuts out whatever the bearing trace is essentially, like a pattern. So we've got a pattern here, this circle that we need to cut out and I've got this bearing. I'm just gonna ride that bearing up inside that speaker hole and the bit is gonna do the rest for me. When we found this out, it was like the greatest thing ever because we, before this, we would sit there and you know mark lines for the circle and trace it all out and then cut it with the jigsaw. And we did pretty good, but it was never as clean as what you're about to see right here. So let me go ahead and kick the router on and within a matter of seconds, I'll have this thing traced out. We just got a perfect, perfect notch using that flush trim bit and a router. So it makes it so easy. We just do this right up here overhead, perfectly trace that circle pattern and move on to our next board. And our next board, we'll put that in and then I'll come around and finish the circle and complete it. And it just doesn't get any better than that as far as notches. So there you have it, perfectly good notch for our speaker here. And I, I couldn't ask for anything better on a notch like that. So if you're gonna be doing one of these ceilings, I highly recommend investing in one of these uh, plunge based routers so you can set the depth and adjust it for different obstacles. And just, you saw how easy it was. You, you're gonna get covered in dust like you see me here. Um, I wasn't smart enough to bring our vacuum that connects right here. That, that would have been pretty convenient, but Either way, um, this just makes it a lot easier. I'd rather be covered in dust and have a perfectly good notch like this than not be covered in dust and, and uh, not have that notch or something. Check it out, complete ceiling, nice and flush. You can see our brick line over there where it meets the T and G. And we got a nice consistent uh, install, no waves very minimal if any but it just just gonna be crisp for this coffered ceiling so there you have it guys nothing to it but to do it you just start stacking them up start in one direction head in another direction and you'll be good to go all right guys there you have it there's an exterior grade tongue and groove ceiling install pretty simple a couple minor differences from interior but if you can follow these kind of guidelines and tips you can definitely have a successful install uh, just quick review, start on one side, make sure everything's square and parallel, make minor adjustments if needed, and then work your way in the opposing direction. And that is pretty much it. You saw how we cut out with those notches, you saw how we blind nailed. Uh, you will see how eventually we use exterior wood filler to fill all the face nails. And you probably noticed that we left a gap all around the brick. That is called an expansion gap. That's so the board can expand and contract and it will not buckle through the seasonal changes. That usually gets covered with a one by two and it's a nice clean look. But in this case, like I just mentioned, we are going to be doing a coffered ceiling as soon as we can get some material because as many of you know in the industry, there's quite a bit of a shortage on just about everything. So once we get that material, we'll pick this series back up 
and we'll catch back up with you guys. But as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.